We are looking at worship today. Today we want to understand what worship, what worship is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Worship is core and central in our Christian, Christian life. It's core. It is the core. It is the core of everything. Amen. Amen. That's where everything starts. We are looking at John chapter 4. And you know that John chapter 4 is, uh, concerns a woman in a land called the land of Samaria. Amen. And, and uh, this woman was a Samaritan woman who Jesus met at the well. And they had a conversation. And finally, in the conversation, there was an agenda that was mentioned called what? Worship. Amen. That's what we want to look at today. So today, I'm not going to go deep in discussing the conversation between Jesus and the woman. But I'm going to go deeper in talking about the agenda of worship when they were, when they were talking. One very interesting thing is that you do not see any, any worship leader here and, and, uh, and choir and instruments in this conversation. <laughs> yet, yet worship <laughs> was being talked about. Amen. There was no music. But you see worship being mentioned, being talked about. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you want to look at this scripture and understand what exactly worship is? Amen. Amen. So that we will not depend on things not depend on people when it comes to worship. We will, we will worship God as he deserves. John chapter 4. The Bible says, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me. Hallelujah. Believe me. The hour cometh. Hallelujah. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You shall not say, I'm worshipping the Father in Jerusalem, or I'm worshipping the Father in the mountain, or Cataloni. Amen. 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 That time is, praise the Lord, it's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Where you shall not say. This is Jesus speaking. Verse 22 says, Ye, look at that. That's where, that's the, my chief, chiefest text. It says, Ye worship, ye know not what. In other words, you are saying, ye worship what you do not know. Amen? You worship whom you don't know. You don't know, you don't know what you worship. Amen? Then Jesus says, we know what we worship. Are you seeing why it is important to know what you worship? Hallelujah. That is where it begins. We have to know. Then he says, for salvation is of the Jews. He is not saying that this salvation belongs to the Jews. Only the Jews are to be saved. No. Jews were a channel for the message or the revelation of God to the rest of the world. Hallelujah. And God will also use, he sent the Messiah through them. For the rest of the world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Not the Jews. Though the God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son through the Jews. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying here, verse 22. Then he says, verse 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh. Amen. It is good to know what the Father seeketh. Such to worship him. What is the Father seeking? True worshippers. Verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Notice the word must. Have you seen must? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. In spirit and in truth. Verse 25. The woman said unto him, I know the Messiah cometh, 
which is called the Christ, when he is come, he will tell us all things. 26, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus now was telling her who to worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I that speaketh unto thee, am, am he. So what is worship? That's where we begin. You know not what to worship. You know not what to worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know when you know what to worship, you, when you know who you worship, then you will worship in his prescribed way. In his prescribed, prescribed pattern. How he desires that we worship him. So what is worshiping? Hebrew uh, and, 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 and Greek words for worship speak of bowing down. To worship is to bow down. Amen. Hallelujah. It is to do what? Bow. It's to bow down. And I'm going to show you by scripture. With your face prostrate to the ground. What you bow to. That's worship. Amen. Amen. It's not music. It's not music. It's to bow. Philippians 2 10 imagine at the name every knee shall bow. Bow down. Every knee shall bow. Bow down. Every big name, the presidents of this world. Amen. The governors. Whoever calls themselves the ones with the big names. Every knee. <laughs> He doesn't, that name knows no position. Every knee shall bow down. Amen. Amen. Every knee shall bow down. Every politician shall bow down. Amen. Not, not human recognition, not human names being recognized. No. It is only one name. That is to be recognized. That's worship. Pure and plain and simple. Go and check the Greek word uh, and, and the Hebrew word. I won't read the Hebrew words and, and Greek words here. Amen. Sometimes it's taught very simply by saying things like, you know, oh, worship is ascribing worth and all that. But worship is bowing. What you bow to. Who do you bow to? What do you bow to? Amen. That's worship. Amen. You don't know the one you worship. This is what the scripture is saying here. You don't know the one you worship. They didn't know God. The Samaritans didn't know him. Amen. And yet worship was about, about him. So you need to know him so that you are able to worship right. We need to know the object of our worship. Who do we bow to? If you don't bow to God, you'll bow to something. Amen. So we need to know our creator. Because he's the originator of our lives. He's the originator of worship. He's the one who created us. If you read Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, it says we were created for what? For his pleasure. Not for our own pleasure. <laughs> let's, let's, let me read it. The Bible says... Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things. And then he says, for thy pleasure. They are and were created. They were created for what? His pleasure. Amen. It's for God to be pleased. We are created to please God. 
who even if who you are. Now you see, me, I thank God for the confidence of saying that, including me. Daniel got a big position. He, he was one of the, the, the head of the provinces in Babylon. But he'd go open the window and kneel <laughs> and bow before God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So already I've destroyed, I've cast you know, all those crowns that we have. <laughs> when, it comes, when we come before God, they have to come down. He created us for his pleasure. We are created to worship him. Hallelujah. When you don't worship him, you'll worship something else. So if you are created by God, you belong to him. Amen. We are God's belonging. And we belong to him alone. We are rightfully his. We don't belong to ourselves. You don't belong to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So our place is to fall down and worship him. Let me show you a scripture. Go to Matthew chapter 4. Let me, let me just clearly show you what Jesus and Jesus, what is written in the scripture about this worship. So that we see it for ourselves. It's not just singing. Worship is not just nice, beautiful singing. Singing is good. It is good. Yeah? We enjoy. But let me tell you, worship is not about our enjoyment. It is not. It is more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Worship is not just excellence. I hear a lot of talk about excellence in worship. I don't know how excellent you can be when you're in your house, in your room. We have... We, 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 are, we are very interesting people. Go to Matthew chapter 4. That's it. The devil took him up into a high mountain and showed him all what the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things. You see all these things. <laughs> I will give you. Amen. And then he says, if Thou wilt do what? Fall down. Bow to me, in other words. Fall down and? Worship, worship me. What, look at the response of Jesus Christ. This is revelation from Christ. Look at what the devil is looking for. And the same devil, behind the scenes, he tries to make us worship him through things. Draws our attention from God. You see the way he was trying to draw the attention of Jesus Christ from God eh? to things so that he worships things. He worships him through things. Amen. You know, when you're worshiping things, you're worshiping the devil through those things. He is the one hiding behind. <laughs> the Bible says, look at this. The Bible says, then say Jesus, get thee hence, Satan. Get. Get. Then the Bible says, get out of here. Eh? For, for it is written, thou shalt worship. It is written. Are you seeing? It is, ri it is written. The tool, the tool for worship, the, the source of knowledge concerning worship is it is written. It's the scriptures. No scriptures, no worship. Jesus referred to the scripture when talking about worship. He says, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord. Not just the Lord, thy God. He has to be your God. Amen. That already tells me that people who are not, the Lord is not their God, they can't worship. That already disqualifies anyone who's not born again from worshiping God. So please, you are not born again, you are still not worshiping God. You can praise and sing all the songs you want, but you are not yet worshiping God. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah. I have to say it like that so that he, you know, rubber meets the road. The road. <laughs> not nicely. I'm saying it as it is. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, you shall worship the Lord thy God. And then it says, and only him shall you serve. How many? Him only. Only him. Worship belongs to God and God alone. And not any other. That's why we sing. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, to make the songs we sing clearer. When we sing them in our minds, we see. What am I singing? I have no other God but you. There is no other. Amen. In fact, there is no God that can be compared to him. All the others are lesser gods. They are creation. He is the only creator. The creator of all. Amen. That's why we worship. We bow. We bow. Hallelujah. That's the attitude. And only him shall you serve. This is Jesus. And you see, Jesus is our example. He's the one we follow. He knows scripture. This scripture is from Exodus. Remember, thou shalt not worship any other God. Hallelujah. So you see, Worship begins with a revelation of who? Of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It starts with the revelation of God. It doesn't start with our ideas. No personal ideas or imaginations about how worship should be. You know, that we need, we need to create an experience. No, 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 no. No, we don't create an experience. <laughs> it begins with a revelation of who God is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can entertain yourself. If you want, that is fine. It's good to entertain yourself. But when you call it worship, the moment you call it worship, we are talking about God. We are talking about your creator and my creator. We are talking about what he says. What is his pattern? What is his plan? Hallelujah. But all that comes when we first get to meet him, see him. Hallelujah. Who is God? That's where we start. Who is God to me, my God? Shall worship the Lord thy God. That's where it starts. What's your own personal relationship, connection with God? That's where it starts. Amen. It's not corporate. No, no. No. Hallelujah. It's not wholesome. No one can worship on your behalf. Not even the worship team. The worship team cannot. They cannot stand here and worship God on our at we are worshiping God through through Ray and the team. No. No. It's personal. Amen. It's one on one. It's you and your God. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Not some knees. Not the knees of the worship team. Every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. So if it's not bowing today, <laughs> it's that time is coming. Hallelujah. When we get the revelation, we become aware of who God is. We recognize who God is. That's where we get the prescription. You know, we know how to go about worship. That's where it starts. Hallelujah. Because it's the one, God is the one who teaches it. God is the one who teaches us worship. He gives us instruction on how we go about our worship. In the Old Testament, if you read the book of... Um, Genesis, and then going to the book of Exodus, then going to the book of Leviticus. You see the, the whole transition from Egypt. Let my people go so that they can go out there and worship. They go out and serve. It's the same thing with us. When you got born again, we are delivered to go out and do something. Worship him. Hallelujah. To what? To worship. To do what? To worship. 
to do what? Our primary reason, purpose is worship. 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 The primary reason why we exist. We are actually practicing while we are here on earth. One day I was worshiping here. And then I, I just had the, 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 the scriptures in uh, Revelation 4 and 5 came to me about the 24 elders and the angels. They just bow and they rise again. And they say, holy, holy, holy. And they bow and they rise again. And they say, holy, holy. And they have no other motivation. They are not doing it to get something from God. They are not saying, I praise you, I praise you for my healing. I praise you for my breakthrough. <laughs> they don't need breakthrough. They don't, don't need healing. Amen. They are not praising for, for, for increase. Father, I receive my increase. I receive my increase. I receive. They are not receiving increase. I don't know if you are seeing something there. Worship belongs to God and God alone. It's not about us. Hallelujah. So we don't begin with our own concepts and ideas about him or about how it should be or our own imaginations. It is him. We start with him. Revelation of him. Not ideas about him. The revelation of him. Himself. Hallelujah. When we encounter him, and we realize and we recognize that he is our God. He is my God. That is where it begins. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Worship. <laughs> and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. We are saved to worship him. We, we come under him. We bow. When you say you are bowing, you are coming under his, his leadership, his, his guide, his rule, his rule. That's worship. We acknowledge when we get the revelation, we acknowledge him. We are admitting that he is the one that we belong to. Hallelujah. And so you see, in worship, you do not feature. Only God, God features. I know you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. I know it. You guys are already thinking Ephesians chapter 2. We are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. But let me tell you, even as sons, <laughs> in worship, God does not share. <laughs> God does not share. God does not share. He doesn't share his worship. Amen. He is our God and Father. We have our God who is our Father. But we do not share worship. With him. At no point, anytime, anywhere, will we share worship. He is the center of worship. In worship, only God features. It's not about us. We are not the focus. The focus is God. Who is the focus? God. Amen. So anytime when we gather to worship, think God. Amen. Think who? God. God alone. Only him shall you serve. You shall not bow to any other God. And only him. Not even yourself. Ray. Only him. So you already, I know you're already sieving the songs <laughs> that you sing for worship. Because they're supposed to be about only him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Only him. Yeah, only him. Worship is directed to him. In worship, we go and give to God. We don't go to take from God. When you are worshiping, you are going to give. It's giving. Giving. I'm going to give him. Worship. We give him. When you are giving something, something leaves you. Amen. 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 It's something you give. You intentionally, sacrificially, you choose to give. That's worship. It's not about you. It's not about me. Amen. Because you know when you come to God, we love coming to receive. 
Amen. I've come to receive your mercy, O oh Father. I've come to receive grace. I've come to receive from you. But in worship, in worship, we come to give to God. Worship. Just think about it. Just, I'm saying these things pole pole so that it sinks in our minds. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I know that we have needs in our lives. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 16, Psalms 11, is it 16 verse 11? 16 verse 11, no, 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 no. Psalms chapter 16 verse 11, what does the Bible say? In his presence. Because now when you're worshiping, you're where? In his presence. There is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So you see, when you're worshiping, you're already at his presence. You are in his presence. Amen. Do you know that when you're in his presence, when you're worshiping him, when you're focusing on him, don't you think God sees your problems? <laughs> he sees. <laughs> we love seeing this song. He sees each tear that falls. But you see, our focus is not on the problem. The focus is not the, on the empty pocket. Amen. The focus is not on that disease or that pain. No. The focus is him. You've just come to give him worship. Amen. Like the 24 elders. <laughs> not, not because of any other reason. Father, I don't come to you for any other reason but to worship you. That is, that is, that is what I'm trying to, 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 to talk about. That, that we need that mentality already within us. So that when we come before him, that is established, that is set. Before any of our needs appear or come to, those are secondary things. Our primary objective before God is to worship him. Amen. Amen. Do you know when we are in the presence of God, because you are worshiping him and you're in the presence of God, that presence is going to cause things you know, to dissipate. Those hardships, troubles, you know, the, the, the difficult things in your life will now begin to disappear. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you're in the presence. Amen. Because you're focusing on him. Take Moses. Moses, these people are being bitten by a snake. Take that, take, take, take that, that uh, what do you call, call it? Bronze. And make, you know, put that bronze snake up, lift it up. Anyone, you know, they were being beaten. Some were already being, they were already been beaten, had already been beaten. And what was happening? They were, the poison was already in. And they were in pain. <laughs> they were in pain. Now this is the antidote. He says, lift it up. Place it up there. When you look, it says, the instruction is when you look at it, you shall, you shall live. When you focus, you shall live. Amen. Amen. Worship is about focusing on him. Not, you know, if, if you, you, are, you are still crying and saying, oh, I'm still, the pain is too much, it's too much, it's, I can't even lift my hand. The pain. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes too dim. <laughs> uh, at, at in my pocket, I have nothing. Oh God, I have nothing in my pocket. How can I even lift my? I'm hungry. How can I lift my hands? Uh, 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 no, no. We give worship. Lift up <laughs> to see the bronze snake, and then what happens? You shall. Then the healing comes. As long as you see it. Revelation. Begins with revelation. You see, that's how God channels things to us. By revelation. When we see him. Amen. You see, you, you see God is not demanding worship because he's a, he's a mean God. A dictator. He just wants things for himself. You know, you must worship me. Hmm? Thanos. Bow. <laughs> Eh? God is not Thanos. Bow to me. Eh? <laughs> if you don't bow, you disappear. <laughs> no. 
No. No. That's not how God does it. He knows your need is Him. Not those things. Amen. You need Him. In His presence, there is fullness and there are pleasures forever. When we are in His presence, when our focus and our minds are just fixated on Him and Him alone, those things will be handled. Amen. Amen. Those things that people call breakthrough will come. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you give Him glory, when you give Him glory, this is. So therefore, when we see Him, we bow. When we see him, we bow. When you get a revelation of him, we, we go down. Because when, when you, you, you will know. You just know this is God. Lord, I bow to you. When you see him, when you get a revelation of him, you will express yourself automatically. Something inside you will just, you, you just want to express yourself to him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you have recognized. I don't know how many have ever been so happy because something has been, someone has given them something. And then it's something they, they really were trusting God for. And they have received it. How do you behave? It's, it's an outflow, an overflow, an outpouring of your heart. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Realizing, coming to a realization of who God is in your life and just letting that overflow understanding that without him you will not even be in existence so we express ourselves based on who he is amen because we reverence him we honor him we give that to him we tell him lord i reverence you i honor you i glorify you amen because we are now just concerned about god here we just want to give him worship. Say, so this sleep, I feel like sleeping, but God, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Glory, glory, glory to you. I feel like sleeping. I'm hungry, but hallelujah. <laughs> glory to your holy name. And you know, as you continue to say that, as you continue to do that, you know what happens? That hunger disappears. You know? Genesis 18.1. Do you know when Abraham met the three men. You know what he did? He bowed. That's what he did. Joshua saw another guy uh, and, uh, looking like a, a warrior. And then what did he do? He asked him, are you with us or are you against us? Then he said, I'm the Lord, I'm the captain of the armies of the Lord. And he realized it, is, it was, God, he was before God. He bowed. When you get that realization, it will not be forced. Worship will not be forced out of us. By worship leader, it will be a, lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Some of you are not lifting up your hands. Some of you, some of you, some of you. There will be no some of you. Ray, there is, here, no, there is nothing like some. Here, we will not tell you to lift up your hands. No. Hallelujah. It is your God. My God. It's personal. Hallelujah. Worship, when you talk about worship, you're talking about a wholehearted response. Your heart, you, you, your heart is, is so full of, of the, the, you know, the joy, the, the revelation of, of, of God. And you just want to pour yourself out to him. That's worship. Amen. You're hungry for him. Amen. You don't kneel, you don't kneel because you have been told to kneel. You don't lift up your hands because someone has told you to lift up your hands. It's just you expressing yourself. Before your maker, before your father. That's worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, when we are worshiping, we are in communion with him. So even those needs, the, those emotional needs, amas, what do you call them? Soulish needs. Let me use the word soulish. Yeah, I have toxic masculine men here. Soulish needs, they are met. Because you are in communion with him. You, are, you remain in intimacy. If you want to, to, to be intimate with God, 
get into worship. Amen? Amen. Be a worshiper. And remember, in worship, it's not you, it's him. The focus is him. It's holy, 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 holy. It doesn't stop. Prayer and your achana are vain repetitions. But in worship, you can say, holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. And you start again. You just say, holy are you, Lord. You are righteous. Lord, when I think about your goodness and all <laughs> that you've done for me, <laughs> hallelujah, that's worship. When you're worshiping, worship. You know, when you're in a relationship with him, you see, show me your friends, I'll show you who you are. When you're in relationship, intimate relationship with him, then changes begin to happen to you. Imagine you're transformed in the presence of God. You find yourself changing you, you find yourself becoming more God-like. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You, are, you, you, you begin to become changed. You are conformed to the image of Christ. Maybe someone has really been desiring change. They are, they, they are just reading the letter that killeth. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Combine that with worship. Spend time in the presence of, of God. Worship. Spend time worshipping him. You know, as you worship him, you're in his presence. You, you, you are spending time with your friend. Your God, your father, and your friend. You're in communion. In oneness. Oneness with him. Changes will begin to happen in your life. Amen. And let me tell you, this thing that people call worship experience, it's not just flowers. You know? Nicely played, excellent music, Greg. Praise the Lord. No, it's beyond that. Not just, not just, not, it's not just the, 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 you know, the vests, the, you know, vestries and the regalia. Eh? What people put on. You, you guys look glamorous. And then we sang English songs that were very complicated and they came out nicely. Then you say it was powerful. No, 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 no. I'm not again singing complicated songs. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm talking about the worship experience now. We are talking about experiencing him. Amen. We are talking about God manifesting himself to you and myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the experience that I know. Amen, Ray. That's the experience I know. That's the one I know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, draw closer to me and I will draw closer to you. In John 14, he says, I will, if anyone loves me, I will, I and the Father will love him and we will manifest ourselves to him. You're talking about an encounter with him. A tangible manifestation of his presence. The presence of God. Hallelujah. He will reveal himself. God will reveal himself. Let your hunger be of him. Hunger for God. I know we have been taught about uh, uh, things so, so much for so long. We want to be young and rich. Yeah? Young and prosperous. You know, with multi-millions in their account. We hunger and thirst for money. Now, can we change that and start hungering and thirsting for God? Gen uh, look at, look at, look at um, Daniel. Not Daniel, sorry, David, 63. He said, my soul longs for you. Can we have someone in this generation who will tell God, my soul longs for you? Originally. You, it's, you are being original. You're not just reading a psalm. My soul longs for you. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for your presence. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Can we have someone in this generation who will say that? Who will thirst for God and hunger for God? Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to be at his presence. Bow before God. Amen. Bow. Just bowing. Worshipping. 
forgetting about all their needs. Amen. Amen? Can we get there? Not for us, but unto him.